Test, test, test. Almond cake. Crunchy almond cake. Breakfast sandwich. They're coming through? Yep. Ready? Hi everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have a recipe that is an almond lover's dream. It's a recipe from What's for Dessert. It truly is, I think, my favorite cake in the entire book. I wanted to develop an almond cake that was this perfect kind of Goldilocks texture and flavor, and this is it. I'm really excited to show it to you. It's super easy. It's my crunchy almond cake. So I, I love almond flavor. I love that like marzipan-y kind of like intensity that you get with almond desserts. Now my go-to almond cake recipe in the past has been, it's a very famous recipe from the Chez Panisse desserts book for the almond cake. But I wanted my version to be like a little less cakey, less sweet. Like I just wanted to really fine tune the almond cake and keep it simple, keep it really kind of straightforward. And I'm so, so happy with where it landed. This is just a phenomenal cake. Almonds show up a lot of different places in this recipe. It's called a crunchy almond cake because there's kind of a crunchy layer of sugar and almonds on top. So I have sliced almonds. Then I have amaretto, which is an almond liqueur. And I also have, importantly, almond paste. This slightly coarse paste made from ground almonds and sugar. It's not the same thing as marzipan. So just keep that in mind. Marzipan has a lot more sugar. Almond paste is still very sweet, but less sweet than marzipan. So make sure it says almond paste, not marzipan. Often you'll see both side by side in the grocery store. Some melted butter for the pan and more butter for the cake. Vanilla extract, some demerara sugar that's gonna help me make that crunchy layer on top. Four large eggs, granulated sugar, all-purpose flour, and some salt and baking powder. If you don't wanna use amaretto, you can just add milk. Just substitute a quarter cup of milk for the quarter cup of amaretto. You're just gonna use a hand mixer to put together the batter and you'll need a nine inch cake pan. And that's really it. So I'm gonna start by toasting my almonds. I love this technique for creating this kind of like top layer on the cake. So I have four ounces or one cup of sliced almonds. These are very thin and I have them sort of spread out in a really thin layer. So they toast rather quickly. It's five to seven minutes. And I'll give them a toss halfway through just to make sure they toast evenly because often the ones around the sides go a little faster. While that's toasting, I'm gonna prepare my cake pan. So I'm gonna take some melted butter and just brush it on the bottom. And anytime I'm using parchment paper, I put butter underneath it to actually help the parchment stay in the bottom of the pan where I want it to. It's gonna go back in and butter the parchment and then the sides. So I have the almonds. You can see that they have just like this really nice, even golden color. Not in every application, but I'm almost always gonna toast a nut before I bake with it because when it inside of a cake, a nut is not gonna toast. It's not gonna get hot enough and have the kind of like moisture loss. So it's just gonna build a lot of flavor and also give that crunchy topping to my crunchy almond cake. I'm gonna start by sprinkling a little bit of the demerara sugar into the bottom of the cake pan. So this is a quarter cup. I'm just gonna do like a light coating. There's no real technique here. You're just kind of layering the sugar and the almonds in the bottom of the pan. And as long as you have pretty even coverage, you're gonna get a really nice crunchy layer. Then I'm gonna kind of take a handful of the almonds Scatter those in the bottom. Then I can scatter a little more sugar in there. And what ends up happening is you get this kind of like intermingling and shingling and layering of the sugar and the almonds. It just turns out super delicious. If you toss it all together, what's gonna happen is all that sugar is gonna settle to the bottom and you're not gonna have the kind of like layering effect because the sugar is so fine. The cake pan is ready. I'm gonna set it aside. All I'm gonna do is mix together the dry ingredients first. My all-purpose flour, it's three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons. I generally don't like to split up measurements like that. It's like I either want it to be three quarters of a cup or one cup, but in this case, like I was wanted to be so kind of like precise and dialed in about this recipe that like that is the right amount of flour. Why wouldn't you use almond flour? Could use almond flour, but I want it to have, like this is already like, I'm already adding ground almonds. Like I don't need, you know what I mean? I'm already adding the ground almonds from the almond paste. I don't need more ground almond. Then to this, I'm just adding my salt and then one teaspoon of baking powder. It's actually relatively little flour, so it's just there to kind of give the cake 
some structure and some balance and everything. Dry ingredients, I'm gonna set those aside. I'm gonna open up my almond paste and show you what it looks like. So it comes really well wrapped, but it still can dry out in the package if it's been sitting around for a very long time. So you wanna make sure that you're using an almond paste that has, it's just soft and moldable and it kind of has the texture of like modeling clay. I'm just gonna grab a scissor. I'm gonna grab, I say a scissors, but that's not right. I'm gonna grab scissors. Some scissors. Some scissors, a pair of scissors. But how is this a pair? This is two knives. I'm going to grab scissors. There it is, pear. So one of these is a scissor, and now it's a pair of scissors. The whole thing is one thing. Anyway, I'm just cutting this off. It's still nice and soft, so this is like, in a sense, fresh, just not old and dried up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crumble it into my mixing bowl. So I like to pinch off pieces of it. Often you'll see almond cakes assembled in the food processor. And if you have a really hard almond paste that you're concerned might not kind of blend into your batter, I would pulse it in the food processor with the sugar and just get it really well broken up and then you can proceed. But this is nice and soft, so this won't have any problem kind of incorporating into the batter just using a hand mixer. A stand mixer also with a paddle is more powerful, so you'll probably get better blending that way, but little like perceivable, perceptible bits of almond paste kind of disappear during baking. So it's not a concern. Now I'm gonna add the sugar. If you wanted to incorporate some other flavors here, like some lemon zest or some orange zest, you certainly could. I would add it now and kind of work it together with the sugar. But this is just all about the almond flavor. If you have any big clumps, almond paste, you can kind of break them up a little bit finer. Developing a cake recipe is all about thinking about the order of operations and the order in which you add the ingredients. And so when I think about almond paste and like how am I gonna incorporate that into the recipe, I'm thinking about the texture and what is it going to incorporate most easily, as well as like what is it made of, what is it composed of. It's a lot of fat and a lot of sugar, so I'm adding it with the butter and the sugar. So I have my hand mixer with the beaters. So you wanna work this on low until everything's kind of broken up and the sugar is mostly incorporated. This bowl is not really big enough. It's the biggest glass bowl I have. I'll order some other ones. So you can see the almond paste is incorporating, but it's not like really getting broken up. So I'm gonna increase the speed. So I put a towel underneath the bowl because it was rattling and it was moving around. So this just helps to keep it fixed so you can kind of focus on the mixer. Okay, so I wanna to continue to beat this and I'll stop it and scrape it on the sides until it's light and fluffy. So this is that like sort of classic first cake making step where I'm just incorporating a lot of air into the butter. So this will get a little bit paler and a little bit fluffier. And you wanna take your time on this step because this is gonna help you to create a light, fluffy texture to your cake. So I'm scrape down the sides, keep going. You can see it's looking paler and it's grown in volume a bit. Because of the almond paste, it's not gonna be as light and fluffy as it would be if I was just doing butter and sugar on its own. But it's pale, it's definitely gained in volume, so I know there's some air in there. Now I'm gonna add my eggs. So this is four eggs, which for a single layer nine inch cake is quite a lot of eggs. But that combination of like lots of eggs and almond paste just makes the most kind of like delicious, rich, moist cake. And I'm gonna beat them in one at a time because I want it to emulsify in smoothly to the rest of the mixture. You might also find that adding that first egg, it will loosen things up a little bit so it might help you smooth out any persistent lumps. Use a bigger bowl than this. That was my last egg. So now I'm gonna add my vanilla extract. I think it's two teaspoons. You don't like vanilla paste in this? You could definitely do vanilla paste. I feel like the almond is such a strong flavor that like it doesn't actually need a strong vanilla flavor. That vanilla extract is just kind of there in the background. So now I have my dry ingredients and my liquid ingredients, which is just that amaretto. Now I'm gonna alternate my wet and dry, but I really just wanna do half the dry. So mix this on low. And then once the flour's almost disappeared, that's when I'll add the liquid. The reason that we alternate wet and dry in any cake recipe is because if you were to add like all of the flour, 
you're gonna make a really stiff batter and it's gonna be hard to incorporate the liquid. Or if you were to add all the liquid, you risk sort of overwhelming the like c capacity of the, f of the butter to like emulsify and you get a kind of broken like soupy mess. So now I'm gonna add the rest of the flour. Okay, so this looks great. It's like super light and kind of like luscious. I'm done with the mixer now. I like to just give everything a thorough scrape and fold to make sure it's well incorporated. So that's it. So easy, really quick. The only even slightly tricky part of this cake is getting the batter into your pan in such a way that you're not like disrupting the almonds on the bottom in any kind of like significant way. So to do that, I mean, it's not, it's a pretty light, easily spread, spreadable batter. So sometimes I'll just kind of give it big dollops, just like so across the pan. And if you dollop, those almonds underneath aren't gonna go anywhere. If you kind of spread, that's where you're gonna pick up a lot of those almonds and it might incorporate, but it's just not a big deal if that happens. It's still gonna be crunchy. So now I just wanna go in and smooth everything. So of course I'm using my small offset spatula. The batter is so fun to spread because it's so fluffy and aerated. Yeah, it looks like frosting. Yeah, so good. And spreading it, I'm not, you know, those almonds are not moving at all on the bottom. So this is super easy. You just wanna get it in an even layer, right up to the sides. Now this cake will dome a little bit as it bakes. It's gonna be super dark golden brown across the whole center and we'll just give it like a poke in the middle. Okay, so 35 to 40 minutes. Here it is, you can see it has a little bit of a dome, which is totally normal. It's very golden brown. If this were like a plain yellow cake or vanilla cake, this color would be overdone. But for this cake, it's not. It's nice and springy to the touch in the center. And I see some very light cracking. That's also how you know it's done. It smells great, nice and springy. If I were to poke it with a cake tester, which I'll do, you'll see that it will come out clean. But it will also come out clean kind of before it reaches this point. So it's like clean, but like a little bit greasy. So that's done. I don't wanna turn this out right away because a cake this hot is really delicate and I risk compressing the surface of the cake, which then becomes the bottom. So I want it to release a little bit of steam and start to kind of set. It's pulling away from the sides of the pan a little bit, also a doneness indicator. So like in 15 minutes, I'll come back, cut around the sides and turn it out. And we can take a look at that crunchy top. I'm cutting around the sides with my offset spatula and whenever I cut around a cake, I really press it up against the cake pan to make sure I'm not slicing anything off and really getting around it. So it's cool enough for me to handle. If it's still really hot, use like oven mitts or a towel, but I'm just gonna invert it. It should come out totally on its own. And actually, it came out with the parchment still in the pan, which is great. So there's a little bit of sugar on the parchment, but overall, it looks so pretty. I love the textured surface. I love seeing the sugar crystals kind of spread out around the almonds. This looks great. It smells so good. Beautiful golden brown color. And now we're gonna let this cool, but actually I baked one last night, so now we can go right into tasting it. I'm gonna slice into it. I love the kind of like super textural surface, and you really see where the almonds layer with the sugar, and the sugar does not dissolve. It stays in crystal form, and so I know it's gonna be like this really crunchy, delicious layer. Using a serrated knife is helpful just to kind of get through that top layer. You hear how it sounds. Because of like the intense richness, it's not the kind of cake where you wanna eat like a huge slice or have a very, very tall slice. So in the book, I have a recipe for slow roasted plums. That would be perfect with this. Do like a little unsweetened cream, but it produces this super clean, beautiful slice. And you can see that top layer of almonds and sugar. Mm. Smelling it, it's like I get all of that kind of like intense almond extract kind of aroma, but also toasted almond. I'm just going plain because I don't think it needs anything actually. I haven't had this cake in a while, I'm very excited. Mm. Such good crunch. Perfect moisture, perfect sweetness, perfect almondiness. Like it's not overwhelming. You get all that aroma and flavor. I love the crunchy top. It's just such a simple cake. I really hope people make it because it looks unassuming. It looks fairly plain and straightforward, but it's a cake I'm really proud of because it's just everything I want it to be. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.